Right, so let's start off with the past game for the Miami Dolphins. Obviously, it's been very disappointing so far this season. Through two games, we only have one touchdown in total for this offense, and that is unacceptable for the talent level that we have on this offense. When you look at our three lead skill positions um, in terms of receivers, we have Kenny Stills, Devontae Parker, and Jarvis Landry. That's unacceptable at this point. I mean, Jarvis Landry and Devontae Parker both have a chance this year to go to the Pro Bowl. So we have two... Pro Bowlers on at your C, on your receiver core, you expect a whole lot more than just two touchdowns through two games. Um, so going into this game, the Dolphins have a really good chance to get a rhythm in the passing game, which is desperately needed at this point. When you look at the Jets game, we came out flat, no chemistry whatsoever. Um, there was some balls that you know there were some things at the end of the Jets game that you like. Obviously, you saw that back shoulder fade to Devontae Parker. Um, and garbage time when it doesn't matter. Devontae Parker really started to get going uh, in, in that rhythm. But we know Jay Cutler and Devontae Parker have this thing going on uh, since he's even got here. He's used to throwing to Devontae Parker's types of receivers. He's had Brandon Marshall. He's had Alshon Jeffrey. So it was, easy with, it was easier for him to get a chemistry with DP. We really haven't seen it with Jarvis Landry. We really haven't seen it with Kenny Stills yet in an NFL regular season game. Obviously, uh, you know, Jay has missed Jarvis Landry in the end zone multiple times this season, not just once but twice. So that's two touchdowns uh, that we could have had, one in the Jets game, one in the Chargers game. Kenny Stills has been given some bad balls uh, the last couple games from Jay Cutler. So as an offense, we have to get back into a rhythm, especially in the passing game. We have a great opportunity. We're going up against the Saints defense that is ranked 30th in the NFL in passing yards. They're giving up 311 yards through the air a game great opportunity for the Miami Dolphins to get into a rhythm in the passing game, which is desperately needed. From a player standpoint, standpoint but a play calling standpoint, um, I hope we're a little bit more aggressive in this game. Obviously, we are, I guess, you know, at the core of this passing offense, in an Adam Gase offense, the quick passing game means more than just about everything else. It's a, an extension of the running game. There's a lot of screens. There's a lot of slants. There's a lot of quick routes over the middle, um, especially with the tight ends and obviously with the receivers so at the core of this offense it is a quick passing game so that means you get in favorable down and distance I want to see this offense push the ball down the football field especially against a young back end for the New Orleans Saints that struggles and they really don't have the greatest linebackers in the world either they have you know Manti Teo who really never lived up to what everybody thought he was going to be coming out of Notre Dame because of injuries then you have AJ Klein who's a long time backup for the Carolina Panthers and he struggled last year taking over the starts for Luke Keekley. So we have a great opportunity to get into a rhythm uh, not only from the player standpoint but from a play calling standpoint uh, at this point in the season. Obviously it's not you know when you look at what happened in the Jets game it was a lot of execution we, we really failed in the trenches in that game um, but you really felt like the offense really hasn't been in a rhythm. Um, and, and just really, it's not, it hasn't flowed fluidly enough yet. And we really haven't seen what this offense is capable of yet. So again, this is a great opportunity for this passing game to get into a rhythm finally. Hopefully we finally see people like Julius Thomas get involved in the game plan more. Uh, Anthony Visano get involved in the game plan more in the pass game off play action. Obviously that comes with down and distance and favorable down and distance and getting you know second to short, third to short so you can take your shot off play action. That was a huge element to our game that was missing in that Jets game is play action passes, which we were one of the best in the NFL at 2016. Um, and we have the personnel on this roster to be super deadly in the play action game. So that's something that we need to get back to. Hopefully we can get the running game going and I'm sure we will but that is something that needs to come back in the passing game so we can take more shots obviously we want to see players like Kenyon Drake get involved more in the passing game catching screens or whatever it is maybe running a wheel route out of the backfield we want to see players like Jakeem Grant Leontay Carew getting more involved into the game plan as well and hopefully that they do hopefully they do um, and more favorable down the distance obviously when you're in third and 10 third and 15 averaging third and 10 a drive you can't do as many things as you would want to in your playbook. So it's not all on Adam Gase. So hopefully we can get into favorable down and distance um, and see some of those things that we saw in 2016, move over to 2017, and finally see a fluidity with this offense. Um, you know, we really didn't see last year into 2016, we really didn't see a fluidity with the passing game until we went on that big run. And once we got in that rhythm, it just it looked like it was it looked like a totally different football team. So hopefully that is this game for us. Hopefully we can get into that rhythm rhythm as a passing game in this football game. 
Um, hopefully we see Julius Thomas more in the red zone. All of those things that we want to see, I think we can achieve in this game. Like I said, the Saints are allowing 311 yards a game through the air. That is 30th in the NFL. We have a really great opportunity to get in the in rhythm with the passing game, which is desperately needed. Um, and I think once we get into this rhythm, then we're going to stay in it for the rest of the year. So hopefully that is this game for the offense to really break out. Um, and again, I think when you look at the Saints' back end, they have a lot of young players back there. They have Kenny Vaccaro is probably their best um, player. He's the I don't know if he's the oldest player in the secondary. I have to go back and look at the... He's one of the older players in the secondary, though. Um, you know, they have young corners like P.J. Williams and uh, Marshawn Lattimore, who missed the Panthers game. I don't know if he's going to play um, in the Saints game. But the point is, is we have a great opportunity to really exploit this defense and to get into a rhythm and build our confidence up for the rest of the season. Uh, so hopefully that hopefully we do that, um, and I expect that we will do that because we have too much talent. Um, and again, one offensive touchdown through two games is, unaccept- is unacceptable with the talent that we have on this football field. So hopefully this game we really get into a rhythm. All right, let's talk about the running game for the Miami Dolphins. Obviously, in the Jets game, that was by far the worst performance I think any of us have seen from a healthy Miami Dolphins offensive line, especially in the running game. We absolutely just got dominated. I mean, that was the worst performance I've seen since, you know, Mike's been here, Juwan's been here, and Laramie's been here with a healthy Miami Dolphins offensive line. It was just atrocious all. It was just, it was so bad. Um, and, and it was unacceptable. So going into this game, the Saints front seven is not that talented. When you look at their linebackers, AJ Klein, he was a longtime backup for the Carolina Panthers. Um, when, when he's been, when he's had to take snaps for Luke Keekley for an injured Luke Keekley, and he's had to play an entire NFL game, he struggled. When you look at Manti Te'o, he's been a good player. You know, obviously his time in San Diego, I, I would say it wasn't bad. It was okay, but he, you know, dealt with a lot of injuries, never really lived up to his potential coming out of Notre Dame. So there is opportunities there. Obviously, when you look at their defensive line, they lost Nick Fairley to uh, some kind of injury. I can't remember. Um, you know, Sheldon Rankins and Cameron Jordan are by far their best defensive linemen. And not to mention, they're giving up 126 rushing yards a game, which ranks them 24th in the NFL. So I actually expect that to be lower. Um, but that's a lot of yards a game. I mean, a lot that's over 100 yards rushing on the ground. So JJ, you know, going back home uh, to London, I'm sure he's going to be playing with a chip on his shoulder. The offensive line definitely wants to have a bounce back performance from the performance that they put on the football field um, from uh, from the Jets game. So there is a lot of favorable matchups when you talk about the running game in this game. This offensive line should dominate in the trenches. Like I said, the only off defensive lineman that we really have to worry about, I guess, that could take over the game is Cameron Jordan. Obviously, Cameron Jordan, former Pro, he's he's actually made the Pro Bowl last year. He's a uh, very very good defensive lineman. Uh, but we really need to get we really needed to dominate a struggling Saints defensive front um, and really dominate the trenches. Um, and that's really going to open up a whole lot more, just a, a lot of things on the offensive side of the football. So we have a great opportunity, not just with JJ. You know, something that I want to see in the running game more of is the other guys. Where has Kenyon Drake been? Where has Damian Williams been? You know, Jay has taken the bulk of the carries, as he should. He's the best player. He's the best running back on this roster. He's one of the best offensive players in the NFL, in my opinion. The man it just makes something out of nothing almost every single play. So when you look at, obviously, he deserves most of the carries, but... I think Kenyon Drake and Damian Williams, they need to get involved into the game plan more in the running game. So hopefully we see that more in this game. Um, and I just hope we dominate up, up front because we have a great opportunity to have a really, good, really, really, really good bounce back game on the Miami Dolphins offensive line. Like I said, I want to see more of Kenyon. I want to see more of Damian. I feel like they've been under, underutilized in the running uh, game so far. Hopefully they're more involved in this game plan. Um, and especially if we take a lead, I, I feel like they will be. Um, and, you know, I think Jay took a lot of those carries because Adam was hoping for a big play that we needed in both of those games. I mean, you go back and look at those games. Obviously, we needed one against the Jets and, and against the Chargers game. That was anybody's game for the entire football game. So, obviously, you want to give your best players, you want to get the, the ball in your best players' hands as much as you possibly can. So, I, th- I feel like if we get a if we get an early lead in London, you're going to see a, a little bit more of Kenny Drake and Damian Williams. But, again... You got JJ. He's hyped to go back home and, and play in front of his family. Obviously, he grew up. He grew up in London, so he's going in there with extra motivation. The offensive line is going in there with extra motivation. They're not going up against a talented 
on defensive front at all. They're one of the worst in the NFL. They're struggling to stop the run. They're 24th in the NFL. They're giving, they're giving up almost 130 yards on the ground a game. So this offensive line and this running game has a great opportunity to go in this game and dominate the trenches. All right, just some final thoughts on the offense as a whole. So rightfully so, the Miami Dolphins offensive line took some heavy criticism after the Jets, and I, it was just an unacceptable performance. Um, but when you look around the league, um, I think it was a weird day. Obviously, the Raiders offensive line struggled. The Cowboys offensive line struggled two weeks before, two weeks prior on the road. Um, so, I, you know, I think this offensive line has a great opportunity to bounce back, and I think they're more than talented. Um to to do that and the reason i bring up those other offensive lines are those are extremely good offensive lines um they're very dominant and even they can have a bad game and i think this offensive line is a top five unit in the league as well um and they were coming off a performance where they look like that against the chargers defensive line that was way more talented than the jets defensive line so i think at this game again they have the talent to do it they just need to put it together and execute one of the other things that i think are rightful criticisms that we need to see more of is just personnel I think we need to see more of Jakeem Grant. We need to see more of Jakeem Grant. Obviously, people forget the preseason this man had, the last two games of the preseason um, against the Eagles. I mean, the man looked amazing. And then, obviously, going to the Vikings, he look, he dominated that game. And that was all due to the fact that we switched him to the outside. Obviously, I think he had, he had one catch for a first down in the Jets game. So, Jakeem Grant needs to be more involved, more involved in the game plan. The man is a very gifted athlete. He's a very gifted player. Um, and I want to see more of of him so hopefully we see some shots taken his way uh to a struggling back end for the new orleans saints uh, let me get you the stats here i can't i can't remember how many yards are allowing in the uh, passing and i think i may have brought that up earlier uh they're they're allowing uh 311 yards to the air a game and in total yards a game they're allowing 437 which ranks them almost dead last in some 31st in the nfl so again this second the back end for them is just absolutely struggling so the defense um or the offense excuse me has a great chance to take some shots downfield and i want to see more i want to see some more uh switch up the personnel groupings i want to see more of the you know in the red zone if, if we get in the red zone this week and I'm sure we will um, because he's obviously a very talented player as well and so is Jakeem so I just want to see some you know shake up the personnel gripping is a little bit more uh, you know take some more shots down for the football field in terms of schematics and what we're going up against schematically as a defense is what the Saints like to do Dennis Allen you know he loves to blitz uh, he likes to send heat um, he likes to play man um, and when you saw what the Saints were able to do, they really spread out the Saints and really took shots down the field. They really utilized the vertical pass the game. So I think that's some of the things we need to do. Take advantage of some of those blitzes. Pick them up. Take some shots down the field. Uh, there's a lot of busted coverages on the Saints back end. Like a ton of them. A ton of them. So I think we can take advantage of some of those things. Obviously, Adam loves to get his uh, his running backs match up with linebackers. And like I said, some of the guys that we're going up against are not the most talented guys in coverage. Manti Teo has never been a good linebacker in coverage at all. Neither has AJ Klein. So we have a good opportunity to match up some of our uh, running backs on their linebackers. Uh, we could catch them in some blitzes and set up some screens. I really think we need to utilize the no huddle in this game. Like I said, there's a lot of busted coverages when you watch the Saints defense, like a ton of them. So if we no huddle and really confuse their defense... Um, and really put them in bad situations, really make them, force them to keep one personnel group on the football field, and utilize some of those things that we can do, dictate the pace of the game, and some of those things like a veteran quarterback, Jay Cutler, can recognize and, you know, really take advantage of. Um, so I think we can do a lot of those things. I think we can catch them in some blitzes and take some so shots downfield. Um, and I think we can get no huddle, get some busted coverages on our side of the football. I think we can take advantage of a struggling running defense that the Saints uh, possess. And I think we can take advantage, like I said, of the, some of those uh, busted coverages deep down the football field. And hopefully we see more of Jakeem Grant and um, Leonte Carew. Uh, obviously, people want to see more of Julius Thomas. And I think you will see a lot more of Julius Thomas if we can just get into the red zone. Um, and, I'm, and hopefully we do that in uh, the New Orleans Saints game. Um, and I think he can really improve our red zone numbers, and I think you'll see a whole lot more of him. So those are just some things I want to see, um, and I think those are the, some of the things we can take advantage of from a schematic standpoint. Like I said, there's a lot of busted coverages on that back end. When you look at what the Patriots did to the Saints, they really spread them out. They took a lot of shots vertically, um, really 
attacked and put pressure attacked and put pressure on a young Saints back end and that really worked for them and I think those are some of the things we can do is really spread them out and attack them vertically down the football field so those are just some of the things I want to see and some of the things I think we can take advantage of all right so let's talk about the secondary for the Miami Dolphins so when you look at what the Saints are doing in the passing game obviously Drew Brees one of the most prolific quarterbacks in NFL history he's always had a great passing game his time down there in New Orleans they're averaging almost 300 yards passing a game which ranks him fifth in the NFL um, in total yards they have 378 a game uh, which ranks them sixth and in points they're averaging almost 20 or just over 24 points a game which ranks them 11th in the NFL um, so their passing game is very good. Obviously, Drew Brees is a, a beast of a quarterback. He's very, very good. Um, and one of the things I don't want to happen in this game, Sean Payton, obviously a very gifted offensive mind. He calls plays beautifully. Uh, he's done that his entire career. That's one of the reasons the man won a Super Bowl um, is because he's just a very, very good offensive coordinator. One of the things I don't want to happen in this game is everybody who's game plan for our defensive line which has just utterly dominated this year um, in my opinion I think they've had a, so far this year have been very dominant um, the quick pass game for has been everybody's answer to our defensive line really attacking the middle of that football field and trying to get the ball out of your hands as quickly as possible to, n to nullify the pass rush um, and really not allow them to get anywhere near your quarterback um, so this game, and I hopefully in this game, obviously getting Lawrence Timmons back is going to help coverage a, a great deal, especially in the linebacker position. We, I mean, we run a 4-3, so our linebackers are, they, they do have a responsibility um, and coverage on base downs most of the time. So in the quick passing game, we really have to tighten up coverage. Um, I hope we see more man here. Um, like I said in the past, I think our secondary um is very, I mean, when you look at the, like, when you look at Xavier, when you look at Byron, you look at Cordrea, you look at Altron Werner, you look at some of these corners, their, their background and their history, the best thing they've ever done is just man press, physical play at the cornerback position. I want to see more of that. I feel like we barely have seen that throughout the, the first two games. I saw some of that on key downs against the Jets. Um, we saw some of that, but it was, I don't know, we just need to do more of it. We really, really need to do more of it because I think that's where the secondary strengths lie, especially at the cornerback position. Um, so hopefully we see more of that against the Saints, and I think that helps com com uh, combat the um, the quick passing game. Passing game because you have tighter coverage. You can you know really mess up the timing in the quick passing game. You can bump people off their out. You can be more physical, and like I said, it just messes up timing. Um, and then that allows, that gives your pass rush more time to get to the quarterback so just simple stuff like that I just I want to see more man press from these corners and you know obviously they're going up against not the greatest I mean some of the matchups they're going up against is uh, Michael Thomas who by far is their best receiver and who's in you know an absolute beast of a receiver he's one of the best in the NFL he's super fun to watch you know he's big he's fast he's a great route runner he's got great hands he's everything you would want in a receiver he does all the little things as well he's under prima donna so he's a very good receiver and uh, whoever is going to match up with him is going to have a long day uh, because he's a very, very, very good receiver. So the Dolphins have a tough task in the secondary to really have a good day. The good news is, is probably the top performer of the secondary so far this year, and nobody could guess, is Bobby McCain. Bobby McCain has played very well through the first two games of the season. He's going to have a good matchup against Willie Sneed, who was their uh, slot receiver there. Um, and he's obviously a big part of their offense, so hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, Bobby can uh, Bobby can ha have a good game um, against Snead. Um, and obviously, you look at some of the other talent on their receiver core. They have Ted again, who's more of a burner than anything else. So the secondary, like I said, I think what Sean Payton is going to try to do, um, other than establish the running game, I think he's really going to try to set up the passing game. Um, and the quick pass game at that, you look at what the Ravens did to us, you look at what the Jets did to us, you look at what the Chargers did to us. Every single one of those games, like, every time our defense struggles like that, it's because of our, it's because we, our inability to stop the quick passing game, and, and our defensive line just cannot get to the quarterback in t uh, in that fast. I think from a secondary standpoint, and what the secondary has to do to, has a, to have a successful game, is just have, just play man coverage, play tighter coverage, really mess up the timing on the outside, and it's not like we don't, it's not like we don't have the talent to do that, um, I feel like we do, 
and I just want to see more of it. So I think that's some of the things the secretary can do to have a better game than in previous games. Like I said, we have the talent to do it. Bobby McCain's having a tremendous year, which nobody could have predicted. Xavier Howard has it in him. I know he does, and I, I know Byron does as well. I mean, the, the you know the last ten games that he had last. Uh, year in the 2016 season it was tremendous so these guys are capable of it they just need to, to put it all together um, and have a good game obviously what we what you want to see from Nate Allen um, and Rashad Jones um, and the, some of it is on the linebackers as well is the the Saints love to get their tight ends involved and that, all, that goes back to their days with you know Jimmy Graham and uh, Jeremy Shockey and some of those players but they love uh, to uh, you know just get their tight ends involved they have Colby Fleener now so that's going to be a big part of the game. So Nate Allen has to do a better job in coverage, um, you know, especially especially in the red zone. In the red zone, they love to get their tight ends involved. And, you know, w when they get on the, their opponent's 30 to 40-yard line, they love taking shots down the middle of the football field to their tight ends. So the, Nate Allen has to do a better job in coverage there. Um, we need a better, more consistent performance from Nate Allen in this game. Uh, but again, some of the things I just want to see, I know what the Saints are going to do to us. They're going to try to get the ball out of the hands of Drew Brees as quickly as possible because their offensive line is, is very bad right now because it's beat up. They lost, you know, Teron Armstead to some kind of injury I can't remember. Zach Streif is out. So they, they, they're they missing a lot of pieces on that Saints offensive line. So we, we the defensive line has been dominant the entire season. They have a chance to be have a really another really good game. It just up it's up to the secondary to have tighter coverage on their receivers to let the defense have success and let do let the defense do what they're best at and that's rush the passer. All right, so let's talk about the run defense and the linebackers for the Miami Dolphins. And I think the run defense so far this season has been much improved from last year. I don't think anybody would say differently. Um, they've really, really surprised a lot of people for how dominant they've been. I mean, when you look what they did to Melvin Gordon, who was basically non-existent in the running game, you look at what they did in uh, in, in New York. Um, obviously, they wore down as the game went along, but you know that first half and into the second half, they really, really were. We're getting a push up front. Kiko Alonso was uh, playing really well. He's flying around to the football. Chase Allen, I think, has had a good season so far. So the defensive front has been much improved in the running game, and that's going to be a huge game plan for the Saints. Um, you know, one of the reasons they brought in Adrian Peterson, uh, and obviously they have Adrian Peterson, Alvin Kamara, uh, and Mark Ingram, is because Sean Payton, throughout his career, has loved to run the football, and he loves to set up the run. Um, and with how deadly their passing game is, that if you, if they can establish the running game, it's going to be a long day on defense. The defensive line, that's the first thing you have to stop. It's very similar to the Chargers game. We just have to stop... Um, you know, AP, um, Melvin Ingram, and Alvin Kamara. And that's a very, obviously, all three of them do different things differently. Alvin Kamara is utilized more in the passing game than he is in the running game. So when you see him um, in, their, in their personnel package, you can pretty much expect it's either a screen or some kind of play to get the ball to Alvin Kamara. In the passing game, when you see Mark Ingram, you see AP, it's most likely going to be a running play. So the run defense just has to do a good job of, of uh, containing the containing them. Uh, the Saints are averaging 96.7 rush yards a game, which ranks them 18th in the NFL. So not, you know, outstanding numbers or anything like that, but they certainly have the talent um, in their backfield to get the run game going. So it's very important as a defense that we stop the run game so that way it doesn't open the floodgates uh, on the offensive side of the football. And again, we have done a tremendous job against the run so far this season, and the, the defensive line has truly dominated um, most of the the, uh, the offensive lines that they've had to go up against. I mean, when you look at what William Hayes has brought to our defensive line and what's, what kind of year Sue is having, for God's sakes, I mean, it's tremendous. So um, I have a ton of confidence in these guys to stop the run um, in this game. And, they're, and again, they're going up against a very beat-up Saints offense. When you look at the linebackers, and they're going to have a tough task just because of, you know, Sean loves running a lot of misdirection plays. He loves running pick plays. Um, so, uh, and obviously, Drew Brees is infamous at this point for autoling at the line. So, he's, there's gonna, they're going to cause a lot of confusion. So, it's up to the linebackers to really communicate to everybody else what's going on, what they're hearing, what they think it is, what they saw on tape, what they think is about to happen, to really communicate with the, the rest of the defense so we have less busted coverages. Busted coverages are the worst thing a defense can possibly do because that's just free points. So, the linebackers, with getting Lawrence Timmons back, the communication should be better throughout the defense, which is great. Kiko Alonso is going to be, be 
moved to the outside, which is amazing. I feel like, uh, well, he he's played most of the outside, but we switched him back and forth. So he's going to solely be on the outside this game, which I think is amazing. I think uh, he's looked better on the outside than he does in the middle. Um, I can't wait to see where Mike Hole is going to be. I hope he's benched for this game. Uh, no offense to Mike Hole, but you know, I just don't feel like he's talented enough to start an entire NFL game. It's going to be interesting to see what linebacker lineup the Dolphins go with for this game. Um, so, again, getting Lawrence Timmons back, and we talked about this in the podcast, but when you get somebody like him back, and, you know, Matt Berg built a lot of some of the, a lot of the blitzes around Lawrence Timmons. He built a lot of the scheme around Lawrence Timmons. So, because he's a very talented player, very versatile, and he's a tremendous blitzer, I, I'm, I'm so excited to have him back uh, because from a talent standpoint because he is a super talented guy, and he just flies around to the football. Getting him back is going to improve this defense. Not only from a, a coverage standpoint, uh, he's he's a better athlete than some of the players uh, we had on the football field. Um, and not only from a coverage standpoint, but from a uh, from a uh, pass rush standpoint. And you know, some of those zone blitzes that have been ineffective throughout the first two games of the season are going to be now more effective with the talent of Lawrence Timmons because he could just rush up field. Uh, and so. The, it, it's going to really improve getting him back. Obviously, like I said, communication is going to be a big deal in this game, and I think getting Lawrence back, a veteran like him, with some of the young players that we have on this defense is, is, a, is a good thing. Um, and again, he's not only that, but he's going to improve the run defense as well. So, And it, it, we haven't had any problems stopping the run without him. So that, that, that's all pointing to great news. So again, I think the defensive line, I'm not worried about. They have a very favorable matchup going up against the Saints offensive line. They've been very consistent throughout the first few games. It's just a quick pass game, and that's all on the secondary they have to have t uh, tighter coverage and really give the defensive line time to rush up field have a good game this game um and I, again the linebacker unit is much improved from Florence Timmons coming back so um some final thoughts um on the defensive side of the football uh again I just want to see more man press um and you know when we were talking about the zone blitzes uh and Lawrence Timmons some of those plays just couldn't hit home because of the coverage and we have more busted coverages when we play zone like that. And running those schemes, running those zone blitzes and stuff of that nature, is very difficult as a defense, especially when you're playing against somebody like Drew Brees, who recognizes things so quickly. It's very hard to run something like that because there's a lot of things that go into that. You've got to make sure you're in your right assignments. You, you, it's very hard to run those exotic zone blitzes. So uh, hopefully he keeps it more vanilla, Matt Burke, this game, and he keeps it just, listen, we can beat you up front. We know we can do that. Um, and just have tighter coverage on the outside, play more man press, um, and, and do some of those things. So those are my some of the things I want to see more of. So I am SkyX1383, guys. That has been your Miami Dolphins preview for this week. Let me know what you guys want to see going into game day, what you would do differently than what the Dolphins have done through the first two games. And I will see you guys in the next one.